Mr. Gilberti, you're all set to. Uh, okay, I'm gonna call the meeting to order at 7.59 p.m. I'm joined by members, Mr. O'Leary, Mrs. Gonzalez, Mr. Walner, Mistress, and Mr. Studo. If we could please recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I do not see recording, but for those participating, for those members of the public participating, okay, Mr. Gilberto is recording. I do see um, Rob is here from NORCAM. I don't see that it's being recorded, but for those of you that are participating, either uh, listening by phone or participating virtually with us. Please remember that when you make comments um, during the meeting and you're not muted, we can all hear those comments and they're also being recorded. So if you have comments that come out of your lips instead of staying in your thoughts, please keep muted unless you're actually raising your hand to participate. Okay, so our first um, order of business is board member reports. And we have plenty. Mr. O'Leary, why don't you start us off? All set for now, thank you. All set, all right. And Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, yeah, I would just like to quickly acknowledge um, our own Francine Coughlin um, from North Reading, who is the owner of Bark and Roll Canine Care and the founder of Rock and Rescue, a nonprofit dog dog rescue. She was named Commonwealth heroine by the Massachusetts Commission on the Status of Women. Uh, she was nominated by Senate Minority Leader Brad Jones. She recently created the Hornets Against Hate Face group, Facebook group and helped lead the effort to organize a peaceful protest in the town common in memory of George Floyd. Um, we're just very proud and fortunate to have such a giving and caring person in our community. I'd like to just acknowledge her. Thank you. And I believe there's a march coming up on Ju the July 8th. And probably Mr. Gilbert will be reporting on that too. Um, and I think that was also organized by uh, Hornets Against Hate too. Um, Mr. Walner. Um, yeah, on the same kind of topic, um, um, tomorrow night I'm meeting with all of the people who wrote to us about doing something as a select board to deal with uh, racial cultural diversity issues in town. And so I'm having an informal session tomorrow with those four different entities, along with some of the people from CIT, like Amy Luckwitz, Kim Manzelli, um, Mary Prenny, Jen Ford. Um, and the, the goal is, this is a one-time deal for me, but the goal is to get them together, to get them talking together so that they can crossbreed and gain energy from each other. And to also, um, encourage them for the long run that you know they have to integrate i'm suggesting that they integrate themselves with the existing government that we have in place a lot of uh you know energy is being devoted towards changing the school curriculum that doesn't happen overnight that takes a lot of effort if we even you know people think they're going to have a chance of doing that so i'm getting together with them to try to get some synergy between all of them so they can have progress which i think the board i'm doing this more as a private citizen than a board member but at our last meeting, we were all highly supportive of seeing things happen in town. So hopefully that works out. Um, the, uh, the Council of Aging and the SSAT combined together um, to, uh, they, they secured a $35,000 community grant. We went to the UMass uh, Aging Lab to have them come back as consultants and to give us um, their proposal they did come back with a proposal. Um, we are going back to them again because it was all rear view looking and not uh, making progress going forward. So if we're gonna have that kind of money, you know, yeah, we certainly need to look back and know where we are, but as important is to know how we're gonna drive forward that AARP initiative mm -hmm. and how we're gonna lead that because if we don't include that, it's, it's just, you know, we're just kind of wasting our time. Again, these are, these are attempts to create long-term solutions to long-term problems. And if you don't have good leadership in the end of the day, you know, then it's not gonna work out. 
And so, you know, UMass has heard the, the challenge. They've never done this before, but they're going to step back and give us a proposal or we'll, we'll split the community compact and find somebody who can do it. Um, I think those are the two biggest things going on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Waller. And thank you for coordinating that with the groups, all the different groups, and hopefully they can achieve what they're looking for in creating that committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mr. Sudo, welcome to your first regular length board meeting. <laughs> You've thank had you. two so far under your belt. This is number three, but this is our first, you know, long, longer term meeting. So welcome to you. You're kind of uh, new, so <laughs> you're going to find out your assignments pretty soon. But yes, so as of uh, as of right now, I have nothing to uh, nothing to report. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, and I just want to, from the chair, say thank you to Mr. Murphy, to Dr. Daly, to the members of the school committee, to the town administrator, to the um, to clerk stats, to Chief Murphy, to Chief Stats, to Mrs. Kane, uh, the members of the public facilities that were over there getting us set up, organizing the hour. I bet you I'm not wrong in saying that was the first town meeting where everybody was wearing masks like that. And uh, it was a little bit of a different process, but I really appreciate, and I, I think I speak for my colleagues in saying thank you to everybody that was a part of making that happen and making that a success for the town so that we could get our budget passed. So we really appreciate all of the effort that went into that, all the planning and all of the extra time that people took to troubleshoot the things that needed to be to, that needed to be squared away in order for that to happen for us. All right, and um, the next order of business is a COVID-19 update by Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, the only update that I will uh, offer is that uh, the, the state has um, advanced the reopening into to phase three. And so um, there are a variety of different steps that'll take place over the coming weeks that are, are related to that, um, which uh, we'll be working through. Um, you know, we continue to have uh, a working group that's been established, although it's moved uh, to uh, biweekly meetings now, um, which includes all of the major emergency response departments, as well as the school departments. Obviously the school department um, through the school committee and the superintendent are working through issues associated with reopening the schools. And um, we've had a, a, a more recently a board of health member participating in those calls. And I, I have tried to participate as, as, um, as, a, as possible as time permits. And we'll continue to work together on, um, on those, uh, those issues. Um, but that's really the conclusion of the update at this point in time. Um, I believe the board of health will be having a regular meeting later this week. And uh, if anything further comes out, we'll certainly continue to provide the updates to the community um, through our email, website, and our social media platforms. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Do any of the members have any questions for Mr. Gilberto? Okay, seeing none, our next order of business is public comment. Is anyone attending that would like to provide public comment? Mr. Gilberto, I see none. I don't see any uh, any hands raised. Um, I see uh, one guest oh. shaking his head no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I did skip it. I'm, Mr. Walner, I see your chat. I, <laughs> I'm getting a new glasses prescription, so that should help me with things, <laughs> but, but we got to it, so. No worries, no worries. <laughs> All right. Our next order of business is to consult with the town moderator, Mr. Murphy, regarding continuing the May 11, 2020 special town meeting. Votes may be taken. And Mr. Murphy is here. Mr. Gilberto. I'll Thank you. End. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I should note I was just corrected that there is not a Board of Health meeting this week. So there may not be anything um, from the Board of Health, but we'll continue to provide the community with the, uh, the regular updates that we've been providing. Um, with regard to the uh, special town meeting, um, the day after the town meeting last week, I, I spoke with the moderator and um, you know, we, we had a, a conversation about what is still uh, scheduled to be a 
special town meeting re related to the seven acres poultry farm. Um, you'll recall that we had, um, in consultation with the moderator, moved that meeting out to Monday, July 27th at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, you know, I, that was an action that I think took place some, somewhere around the end of May or early June. Um, you know, we have, uh, we have it on the agenda mostly because there are some steps that will be required, namely among them are mailing the, uh, the warrant to our residents so that they get it two weeks before that town meeting. Um, what I, I think I was hoping we would be able to do is to coordinate the timing so that much like for the annual town meeting, we're, ma we're mailing a, a, a document that identifies a, a meeting that we're, we're hoping we'll be able to, um, to conduct and to, to, to actually hold. Um, and that we'll be able to provide information specific to that, uh, that meeting as well. Um, I, I think from the moderator, myself, um, the public safety director and the um, town clerk, you know, we have had some conversations since last Monday's annual town meeting. And I, I think our feeling is that because of the likely um, size of the attendance associated with the, the turkey farm properties, as well as um, what may be a lengthier deliberation than what occurred the evening of the annual town meeting, um, that having it in the evening indoors in the gymnasium is um, not necessarily something that we're, we're likely to be able to do um, on the timeline that, that we're looking at right now. And so that, that would leave us with the options of continuing to work with the moderator, and it would be his determination, obviously, um, to, um, to postpone the meeting uh, or um, to look to see if there are alternatives for us to conduct the meeting um, rather than, um, than postponing it. And I'm, I'm not even suggesting that it would be that date, but I more wanted to open a conversation about what our next steps might be able to be for that town meeting um, and so that we can begin planning. Um, you know, and there, there are, you know, options that we've looked a little bit at and that we would need to look further at. We don't necessarily need to even come to a conclusion in the discussion this evening, but I, I more wanted to open that discussion with the moderator here. We, of course, would be consulting with the Board of Health once any determination is being made. Um, just, and, and just wanted to open this as a starting point. Um, and, and I say that because I think that we know there's a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen with regard to um, the, uh, the pandemic and um, the case numbers and, um, you know, that the, part of that uncertainty is we just, we don't know when the, the public health emergency that we're in will, will end. We have the ability to hold off on having the town meeting until the conclusion and even after the, the um, conclusion of the public health emergency. But again, we just, we don't know what that timeline is right now. Um, and um, so I, I guess I bring that up only to sort of understand and, and maybe open a conversation about whether we want to look to just continue to, to, to postpone or whether we want to try to see if there's a way we could pull off the meeting. So I know that was a bit rambling, but that's a very detailed description of why it was on the agenda. Mr. Murphy, any thoughts? What's your thoughts on this? Well, um, just from the, I'll, I'll approach it just from the meeting perspective, um, it's likely to draw a larger crowd than we had for the annual town meeting. Um, there are, I think, in the current um, changes that have been made that there are differences in the quorum requirements, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, we wouldn't have to have the 150, I believe, that we would would be required. I mean, it really comes down to um, are we is the board ready to send the warrant, and is the board ready to um, to make that whatever that recommendation is, and and move forward with it. I mean, I'm I'm. Um, I've been on between the Board of Health and the Board of Select, and I've been on several Zoom meetings, and I'm amenable 
to what works for the community of North Reading. And I, I guess the only thing that, and, and I'm not, um, I spend most of my time in my office, which is where I am now, but I, I'm not plugged into, um, you know, that whole, um, that whole process in a, in a way that I could opine on that, but you know, the, the, the folks who are, are trying to sell the property, um, you know, so that, but that's not my, my role. My role would be to say, when we're ready to have that town meeting, I'll be ready to preside over that town meeting. And I want to do so um, in a safe and, a, and effective manner as we, we did last time. So I don't know if that helps or if I answered sure. your question. I think so. I think Mr. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. And the moderator is correct. And I know, uh, Madam Chair, you're also well aware um, because of more recent legislation in the month of June, which among other things uh, allowed virtual town meetings for representative town meetings, which does not apply for us. There's also an ability to reduce a quorum requirement um, that requires, a, I believe, a public notice either seven or 10 days in advance and a vote of the select board to do so. Um, I, I think that's something that we would be recommending just so that we're able to conduct business um, here uh, in this case. Um, but, you know, obviously, while it reduces a minimum, it does not establish a maximum. And so you still end up with the possibility of a, a more significant attendance level than what we what we saw the other night at the uh, at the June annual town meeting. And I think the other um, key piece of this that we I know we were working very diligently to try to make a determination on where, when, how for our um, town meeting. And that was crucial to passing the budget with regard to the other special legislation in place. I believe we did receive a uh, council's opinion with regard to the, the statutory deadlines under the special legislation, the time within which to act specifically related to the acquisition has been will be extended to a period of time once the state of emergency is lifted. Um, so that's another key piece of this that we could potentially, you know, delay the special town meeting or we could potentially move forward seeking a reduction in that quorum. I think it's 10%, uh, no less than 10% of the uh, minimum quorum required is what it is, right, Mr. Gilberto? So, that's, correct. that's correct, Madam Chair, yep. So I think let's hear from the, uh, I'd like to hear from our colleagues on what their thought is on that. And, and then in another, another aspect of this, it became a lot of topic of discussion for us for the, the town meeting, um, which how we handle that was having the virtual meeting in advance so that people could ask their questions. We could potentially do the same thing with this one. Um, but we also would definitely need that list minimum quorum requirement. And then there was a lot of discussion about indoor, outdoor. Hopefully um, that indoor, we have a sense of the successful ability to carry it out indoors. And even though that was a monumental amount of work to redo it in the gymnasium, that that could that's another thing I think we have to consider. So let's just and to Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I would add that you know that is something that that we've discussed and you know we have not talked with the Board of Health itself with regard to this issue. But I mean I think we're all aware that you know that they were um, that they were not they they did not recommend the town meeting be held um, indoors. I think for you know a number of the arguments and, and reasons that we had had to propose an indoor location, one of them was the expected crowd size and the, the duration of the, the discussion as a result of a concerted effort on the part of this board to minimize the warrant to only um, essential and time sensitive um, business. You know, given that this deliberation is a bit more complex and because of the abutter impacts and the likely increase in the size of the crowd attendance, um, I think you know, we're sort of looking at options for 
something that would need to be either outdoors or in a larger venue that might not necessarily be here in North Reading as well. And so I do want to put that out there. And we have not, you know, we, I don't want to say that we have the answer at the moment, but I, I think in, in, in anticipation of where we, are, where, where we are at and with one indoor meeting under our belt, you know, we started to look ahead to say, okay, what, what might our options be? So I, I only would add that. And thank you, Madam Chair, for letting me speak again. All right. Mr. O'Leary, any thoughts? I think we should, you know, obviously uh, move forward with the special town meeting uh, sooner rather than later. As the town administrator pointed out, you know, we don't know what's going to, what the um, future of this whole pandemic is going to bring, you know, whether there's going to be a spike in, in cases and a throttling back of, of, you know, the phasing here, or, you know, we just don't know. So to, to me, I think it's, uh, we're pretty much in a position where, you know, we already scheduled to have the meeting in, uh, in May. Um, you know, I, I think we should proceed on a timely basis and have it sooner rather than later. I think we should uh, uh, certainly consider if we're going to consider an outdoor uh, setting, which I'm not opposed to. I just I would be. Uh, uh, I, I believe it should happen on like a Saturday morning rather than you know when you have it in the afternoon or evening. You're subject to uh, this time of year, you know, thunderstorms and weather conditions um, getting worse as the day goes on with the heat. Um, so again, I think a Saturday morning outside um, may be a, a, a good option for this particular um, a town meeting. And again, I, I agree, I concur that there's going to be a little more interest in, in this town meeting than in the, the annual one that we pared down. Uh, so that being said, you know, I would be in favor of moving forward sooner rather than later. And uh, not opposed to uh, considering an outside venue, but I think it should be a Saturday morning, you know, 10 or 11 o'clock. <laughs> Pick the time. No, All really. right. Thank you. Before, yeah, thank before you. things heat up. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, I agree. Uh, last meeting, I was opposed to outdoor, but I, I felt we weren't going to get a big crowd, and I felt that it was would be doable to be inside. And we were lucky we did because of the weather that night. Um, but I would not be opposed to outside for this because it's, um, I think it is gonna draw a bigger crowd. Um, I like the idea of people doing the public comments and asking their questions ahead of time. Um, it might speed it up a little bit if people can get things answered ahead of time. I think that was a good idea. Um, I'm not opposed to a Saturday morning, but if we're gonna do it in that same week, I won't be here on that. Saturday, so that that would be an issue. That would be the twenty fifth um, instead of the twenty seventh. I wouldn't be here on the twenty fifth, just so that's out there. But other than that, I would not be opposed um, to a Saturday. I think that would be fine. Um, those are my thoughts. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez, and Mr. Walner. Yeah, I, um, I'm also in agreement that it probably should be outside. The only question question I would ask is, um, you know, if it does rain uh, <laughs> and there's no tent, you know, what do you do? Do you bring your umbrella and, you know, go through it or can you delay it or can you have a rain date? Go ahead, Michael, I see your hand up. It's just a practical question, that's all. Um, Ms. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I think that the thinking was, and again, you know, just as we tried to look at what our options might be, I think our thinking was to choose a, the, the next possible Saturday from that July 27th date and, and anticipate that we would, you know, look for a good weather day. And if the weather appeared that it was going to be prohibitive for the meeting to occur, then we would work with the moderator and with the board and the board of health and recommend um, a delay to the following Saturday. Um, the oh. window is tight in August in, in that um, we have three Saturdays, uh, the 1st, 8th, and 15th that, that I think we were sort of looking at. And again, I'm saying this not having nailed down a venue at this point, but for sort of discussion purposes. And I, I think our thinking was if we could pull it off for that August 1st, then we would sort of have three bites at the apple. Um, if we can't, then we would at least have two bites at the apple on the 8th and the 15th. 
Uh, I'm leaving out the 22nd because, and the 29th as well, because we would be, and I think those dates are right. Um, yep. I don't have, yeah. They're in front of me, but I'm going from memory. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm thinking that I, I know from talking to the town clerk who is on the call here this evening, um, they'll be in early voting for the state primary. And they are required to be open, um, I believe, Saturday the 22nd and the 29th. Um, so you know that that would pose a challenge for our, our electoral election staff to to pull the meeting off on, at that day because it would be in conflict with the early voting um, for the primary. So, um, but we do believe that there could be a window um, that could be there. And again, you know, notwithstanding needing to identify the right facility. So I, I think um, the, the weekend before, I know this actually, that the school is already planning the graduation ceremony outdoors on the 20th. So we'll kind of have a test run with them um, and spacing out. I believe they're going to be spacing out spaces. They are lim I believe they're going to be limiting the number of attendees to your immediate family members, which is a bunch in my case, but that's beside the point. And there's a lot of four and six family family member families that are going to be there. But there, I think that we'll have a they'll have done this before if we're if we want to go ahead and work with them again on the field. And I think to Mr. Walner's point, when we talked about this with the regular town meeting and talking about inclement weather, we were going to have to have the backup plan inside the school so maybe we have the backup plan of that if we did pick a day to move forward that mr murphy agrees with we'll, we would just do go along the same the same path that uh, mr o'leary suggested for that which was in the gymnasium which we know worked out um, okay and had a, quite a bit of space that could hold more people and then the there was actually two spaces set up there for our second secondary room so I think the log the logistics can definitely be, um, you know, taken care of. Did you have any other questions, Mr. Walner? No, I just the other thing I would suggest. No, we have a backup is good where we can punt if we need to. Um, okay. The other thing is I would start earlier than I, I just think we should start at eight thirty nine o'clock because at ten o'clock that sun is beating down. We're going to be in the, yeah. you know, and it never gets started at ten. So <laughs> we start at ten. It starts at ten thirty. So let's get real, right? Let's start early and you know, let's try to get people out of there well before 11 because if it's hot, it's, you know, nobody's going to want to stay and have a good open discussion. It's just going to stay there. So really just one other comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Just one other comment in relation to the uh, reduction of the of the quorum. I think we should avail ourselves of that opportunity and drop it to the 15 instead of 150. And again, that would provide the, the moderator more opportunity to adjourn it to another session. So if it does rain, we can get 15 people there to make a motion to move it to a specified time and date. And oh, I yeah. think we should avail ourselves of that opportunity too. Mm -hmm. and that would probably be at our next meeting, I would assume, Mr. Gilberto, correct? So. No, he's on mute. Sorry about that. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, I think that the thinking was to try to get some feedback in, in this fashion here and maybe take the steps to try to um, come back with a, you know, a, a plan that reflects what we've heard this evening. Um, and again, we've taken some initial steps and in, to understand what our options might be. But I think the thinking is on January, on, on July 20th, your next regular meeting that we would sort of formalize everything, including if it be the will of the board advertising a hearing for reducing the quorum requirements um, as well. I think also just to add to that, because I pulled up the special legislation just for our edification and that we can get a firm answer to this, but I think there's some, some timelines in terms of our vote. It has to be pre, it has to be published in advance that that's what we're considering doing. And um, so that might be one vote that we should take is if as a board with in working with Mr. Murphy, we think that that's necessary, then we should vote this evening to, you know, proceed with the reduction, you know, that, that we're anticipating doing that and follow the legislation. It says that it, you have to, um, the select board 
it shall publish notice of its intention to consider an adjustment not less than seven days before the vote of the select board. Um, so if that's what we want to do. I'm not saying vote to do that, but I'm saying, you know, vote to proceed if that's what Mr. M Murphy agrees with us to do. Vote to proceed to publish that. And then at our next meeting, which we do have a next scheduled meeting, is to put that on for a vote of the board. I think that's how the legislation reads, but you can fine tune that with our attorney. Um, and then there's another requirement under the special legislation, not less than 10 days after the vote to adjust the quorum, our town clerk has to notify the attorney general that that's been done. So I think there's all, you know, kind of procedural requirements of us. And let's let let's hear from Mr. Studo on his thoughts. Um, I won't speak to lo the logistics. I can you know leave the hard part to Mr. Gobardo on that one. Uh, however, I do agree with Mr. O'Leary that as soon as it's safe to do so, and if it is, I don't think we should do any further delay. Just so, from a standpoint of just fairness for all the players involved, from Mr. Coviello, uh, the sellers, and the town. So. I just think that if there's a way to do it safely based on the new guidelines from the state and board of health and, you know, their opinion that uh, I do agree it should be done sooner rather than later. And then uh, I definitely agree with what Mr. Walner said that um, I'm out here with my kids and by 10, 10 30, you are, uh, if you're in the sun, you know, you're, you're going to be in a real hurry. So the worst thing would be that, especially if the quorum, uh, the, you know, we don't vote for the quorum to be lower. The worst thing would be that people leave before it's complete. And then, you know, I, I've seen some interesting things in three town meetings I've been to. So maybe a Saturday morning, you know, before nine o'clock with a backup plan to the gymnasium sooner rather than later. Kind of Thank you. And I, I mean, I, I actually would concur with it being outdoor if we can agree to um, move forward with it. If, if Mr. Mur Mr. Murphy's in agreement to a reduction of that quorum, if it's permitted and we can back back into that timeline, do we have enough time? You're not going to have me on August 1st. So I just want to give you that heads up too. So in terms of timing and a Saturday and I'd like to get Mr. Murphy's thoughts on that. Mr. Murphy, are you, do you think that we should be um, proceeding with uh, publishing to reduce the quorum at the special town meeting? I, I would certainly recommend that you um, go through the process to reduce the quorum. Um, that, and, and I forget who said it, but um, I mean, if we don't, get 150 we can't call the meeting to order to postpone the meeting to another time in the rain so i would certainly recommend that as a first step and to start that you know sort of now so that that's that's there so that the quorum requirement isn't there and that way we can work on the, the venue and the, and the date and the time and it that works for everyone. And um, we can also, you know, you don't have to, you can postpone for um, that, that day or night to the next day or night, or you can postpone to the next, Saturday or whatever works and and we still have to find the venue so but I, I would think that's a, a great great first step last several town special town meetings I know this issue is different but last several special town meetings we've had a few issues okay and do you think um are you more inclined i think you are more in, in, inclined to an outdoor meeting for our town meeting are you in more inclined towards outdoor for this meeting if the if it so, can be planned properly and yeah so I, I was 
I was more inclined initially to outdoors for the annual town meeting until I took a look at the venue, took a look, took a look at the time frame, and and the topography and the parking and all those things. And I didn't know if it would work. A couple of things I've heard tonight are um, the, the the graduation they're going to try on the on the twentieth which I can go observe from afar to see and hear how that all, how that all works. So, um, I mean, clearly outdoors is safer than indoors having, so between the meeting I had with you when I was sort of leaning towards the outdoors, mm -hmm. I then, because that's my job, I attended the meeting with uh, Mr. Gilberto and Barbara and, and Chief Murphy and Chief Stats and, and others to plan an indoor town meeting. And when I left that meeting, I felt 100% confident that we would be safe. And my wife's in healthcare, so I get it ingrained in me all day long. <laughs> so um, I felt that the plan we had was safe in particular because I knew the size of the crowd we were likely to have because we don't have a big crowd for annual town meeting anyway and the warrant was pared down. So, but with this, I don't know what the, the attendance will be. But I think opening, uh, reducing the quorum requirement, I think would be an important piece of the puzzle in particular, if we do go outside and it rains. So I think I think in terms of what we need to do tonight, at least we have sufficient time to be able to, um, you know, vote to publish that. If you need a vote, Mr. Gilberto, or do you just need a consensus of the of the members to publish that it's our intent to take a vote at our next meeting to reduce the quorum? And do you have enough time? to publish that before our next meeting. It's seven days in advance of the vote, so. Madam Chair, through you. So, you know, based on what I'm hearing is the intention here, we would uh, work to put in an ad in the, in the newspaper um, for this coming Thursday um, with regard to the intention of the board to vote. That would get us, I think, 10 days or 11 days in advance of the next regular meeting of the board on July 20th. And I believe would get you into compliance with the statute for taking that action on reducing the quorum. Um, so I, I think that I, I've got, you know, I've got, I feel like I understand the guidance with regard to that issue. Okay. Um, no vote necessary then. You I, have the is, is, I think at this point, um, that there, will, there will be a vote necessary on July 20th, though. Yes. Of course, of course. But in terms of you have the consent of the membership to move forward with that publication. Right, right, Mr. O'Leary, correct? Yes, I can't hear you. Do you, you have, I think you, you were in favor of reducing the quorum, correct, Mr. O'Leary? <laughs> You're muted. You're still muted. We can't hear you. I, I am, and I, but I'm, I'm still in favor of, uh, I think it's important for us to have a motion as guidance. For the record, so having okay. said that, Madam Chair, <laughs> I move after having consultation and getting the approval of the moderator that the select board publish a notice of its intention to reduce uh, or otherwise adjust the quorum requirement um, for the scheduled special town meeting. And what's the date now? Is it July twenty seventh? Currently, I think it's whatever it is. Yeah. But anyway. Correct. Right. I think it's important that we we do have a motion to, stating that we've consulted with the uh, with the moderator and received his approval. Uh, the select board that we publish a notice of of our intent to reduce the quorum for the upcoming scheduled special town meeting. Second. Okay. And I have a motion and a second. And for purposes of discussion. Um, Mr. Gilberto, I did not see a date specific in the special legislation. And I'm concerned that if we 
if we say reduce a quorum on June 27th, and then we continue it to August 15th, that we would have to take that vote again. So should we just be qualifying it for a reduction in the quorum of the special town meeting for um, purposes of acquisition of, should we just relate be relating it to the particular business that we're going to be in, intending to handle or should we put the date certain? So Madam Chair, our understanding is that this meeting will actually for forever be known as the May 11th, 2020. <laughs> even though we're talking about having it in July and in all likelihood August. Um, so I, I think that if you worded it as the May 11th special town meeting regarding seven acres turkey farm, that would be sufficient. Okay. All right. And or any, and or any, any continued, continued special meeting date, <laughs> something like that, yes. cover everything. <laughs> um, okay, so I have a motion by Mr. O'Leary. I do hope Jane got captured all that. <laughs> That's a tough one. And I have a second by Mrs. Gonzalez. And any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Mrs. Mr. O'Leary was an aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. And Manu Pelli is I. So that's unanimous. We can move, we'll be moving forward to be publishing that. And then that'll be a vote on our next um, next agenda, next meeting agenda. The second aspect of this, I think, is um, where we heard sort of a consensus. And um, I think what Mr. Murphy is really advising us to do, which makes a lot, whole heck of a lot of sense, is get with the, you know, the appropriate um, parties here would be school committee and um, <clears throat> Miss Dr. Daly again, and um, see how we can make this happen and where we can make this happen. Um, you know, I think we were, you were anticipating wanting to publish the warrant with the two warrant articles related to the acquisition. <clears throat> so um, I don't, know as yet if we can determine the place uh, for certain and the date and the time for certain at this point. Um, I know that's what you were thinking we, you wanted us to do, right, Mr. Gilberto? I, I really wanted to start the conversation. I, I did not expect that we would be able to finalize that this evening. Um, that says we, we are, because of the time it takes to print the warrant and the, the many copies of it, and then deliver it to the post office for distribution here in town, we, we end up with what, it, what, what turns out to be about a three and a half week lead time. So the, the sort of conundrum that I'm gonna find, that we're gonna find ourselves in is, you know, if we get to July 20th and we're consulting with the moderator and if, have consulted with the Board of Health and we're trying to finalize, um, you know, we're, we're gonna be pushing that date further out into August. So. I'm, I want to talk with town council, but I, I, I'm almost kind of feeling like we ought to mail the warrant um, and maybe mail it and identify it with a, you know, highlighting the dates that it's been continued to and noting that it is going to be continued again. And like we have done in the past, pushing out that information because I, I don't want to, because of delay, take any dates off the table for um, the board and the moderator to consider for actually holding the meeting um, if, if that, that makes sense. Okay, Mr. O'Leary. The question to Mr. Gilberto, because I think it was suggested uh, the last go around too, is to just use the uh, high school, middle school property as the venue, as opposed to specifically the gymnasium or the auditorium or the performing arts center or the football field. That way we could publish the warrant. And then once the venue is nailed down, assuming that it's on school property, on the high school, middle school property, uh, we can then um, push that information out. And that way you could keep your timelines and um, explore the opportunities. I think that that's a, a, a good option for us. Um, it's the one thing I would be concerned about is the, obviously the date. Um, 
we, we can get it in the mail to people before July 27th. I'm not worried about that. Um, but I, I, I don't expect that we would be having the meeting that evening and I can't, I, we won't be able to get it to the residents more two weeks or more before that July 27th meeting. So what I'm struggling with is we don't, we don't have a date to work off of and I don't want to pick a date and then have it not be the date either because we still have some legwork to do. Well, again, I would again suggest that you pick the first or the eighth, you know, pick one in consultation with the moderator even tonight so you can put it in. And again, we would then have a contingency plan to continue it should the weather not permit or you needed a backup plan. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds as though the it's either the first or the eighth would be the soonest you can get anything out and done and known proper with proper notification. Mm -hmm. First being even tight. And um, first yeah. first is not available. I won't be available on the first. So, okay, all right. so August 8th certainly gives us plenty of time to get the mailings done. And then uh, it would give the moderator an opportunity to uh, sign some more paperwork that he's getting used to signing his life away on, you know, as far as, you know, extending the July 27th to August 8th. And then we just, no matter what date we pick, we're going to, we're, we're guessing on the yes. weather. So. Madam Chair. But, um, okay. Yes, Mr. Gilberto. Um, I, I, so the public safety director and the town clerk are, are both on here. Um, I, I would be inclined to say we, we issue it dated May 8th. Um, at sounds like nine o'clock a.m. at the August. August. August, <laughs> August 8th. We already missed May eighth. <laughs> or August eighth um, at nine o'clock a.m. at the middle high school uh, property, or something to, worded to that extent. But I, I would like to ask the town clerk and the public safety director just for any anything that they wish to add to that, if that's okay. Yes, and I I think we need to. How does, because it's already scheduled, technically speaking, right? It was May 11th and the moderator continued it. So does, are we jumping the gun by deciding now before the moderator continues it again? Or what? what is the proper process for that? Your vote would be to recommend to the moderator a, a date, time and location this evening. Right. And what okay. I'm just looking to do is to make sure that I, you know, we we yes. four times. we do have some more work to do to yes. nail down the location. But for purposes of mailing a document to residents, I think what's been proposed makes sense. But uh, okay. I, I do want to give the town clerk and the public safety director an opportunity. And I would just note they're not here this evening and they are not having a meeting this evening. But we would be seeking to consult with the Board of Health as well as is required under the statute. And then the other important aspect of this is I think this, the school department that Dr. Daly, they, it is COVID-19 and the, you know, we have not had the restrictions lifted and we haven't even, uh, I'm, I'm assuming they're assuming that we were simply going to continue this until a later date when the state of emergency is terminated. But so they may not even be aware that this is what our intent to do is, and we really haven't included them in the discussion of right. this either. So you're absolutely right, Madam Chair. So absolutely, that's another factor to consider. But yes, if, if Clerk, Madam Clerk, are you you're on mute? And I think let me see here. I'm here now. Okay, great. All right, your thoughts. Um. I I do think we need to get something out uh, in the mail just to make sure that we don't miss the deadlines. You know, the moderator can issue a further continuance to August 8th um, as the chosen date. And I think the um, venue being the high school, middle school property as we had brought up before um, is a good idea. So it's not limited to either, you know, the outside or the inside. Um, so I do think, I do think it would be a good idea if the board is choosing to move forward on this to, to try to, uh, set a date, uh, as long as the school department is in agreement to us using their venue and, um, start to work to proceed to it because it will take a lot of planning. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And we have a uh, public safety director, Chief Murphy, with us as well. 
Any our thoughts, Chief Murphy? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, so we are working with the schools at this point regarding graduation. So we should have a lot of logistics down at that point. Um, Parks and Rec would need to be involved as well because oh, it's yes. exactly their property. So other than that, I don't have much more to add at this point. Um, Chief Murphy, that it's going to be outdoor, right? On the field? The graduation is? Yes. 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 And at that point, yes. Tented or not tented? That I do not believe it is going to be tented. They're, they're trying to utilize the whole field um, mm. based upon the amount of, of um, students graduating. Um, but we're still working on it, but they just don't have a, a tent big enough for the whole field. So um, I have to check the operational plan. I'm not sure if there's an actual rain date yet, but um, we're working out the final logistics now. And I have one more question for you, Chief Murphy. Have they worked out um, a you know podium for the superintendent and you know individuals that are attending like that, or have they a sound system or anything yeah. of that nature worked out? Yeah, that's all been worked out um, by the schools. Um, we don't have much input into that, so they, they're working on that logistics. We're working on the. Um, the public safety end of it, parking, um, doing what we can to help the, the students and family um, stay as separated as possible, um, you know, under the guidelines of the governor's orders. Um, th there is a, a, a pretty detailed plan in place. I believe they are going to be releasing it shortly if they haven't already. I thought they did, um, but it, there will be a plan detailed to the public soon. Okay. So in that, now I'm just asking you because it, it's, it's new, this, would, this is new to all of us. So just to kind of get our you know, first thoughts wrapped around how, how could this be possible? Even though we kind of went through this exercise for the annual town meeting, um, just trying to figure out outdoor, indoor, I think it helps to kind of get us thinking about it like Mr. Gilberto wants us to do. All right, so are we at prepared as a board to, I think based on the recommendation, are we prepared as a board to pick a date, pick a date uh, mm -hmm. while we have Mr. Murphy available and pick a time and at least we'll be able to, you know, you know, have something advertised. Does August 8th work for everybody? That works for me. Yes. Mr. Murphy, does that work for you? Kind of hinges on oh, Mr. No, Murphy. I'm traveling. <laughs> You're traveling. That's all we need. That's all we need. He yeah, won't I'll, be there. I'll, I'll come to North Reading for a <laughs> so don't worry. It works for me. <laughs> Just like it. All right. Um, and uh, Mr. O'Leary, does that work for you? Okay. Mr. Walner? Yeah, I can make that work. Mr. Studo? Yes. All right. And um, Mr. Walner said nine. Mr. O'Leary said 11. I said 10 and 11, but no, I'm, I'm, good, I'm good with nine. I'm good with nine. So, that makes sense. It does get warm in the morning, particularly not. I'm asleep at nine on a Saturday. <laughs> You're not going to get a big crowd well, at I'll, nine. But I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> we'll prop you up. All right. Does, does nine work for everybody? Yeah. Will that be good? All right. It's, I think that, so that Mr. Gilberto, does that give you a direction in terms of how we're going to proceed and in terms of um, the recommendation? Perfect. The motion. There is a motion number seven that Mr. Studo wants to read oh, it. Just in I am dying to read it. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been just waiting to put in this date. I've been holding the pen like this. All right. Minutes. Okay. So do I have a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend to the town moderator that the special town meeting scheduled for May 11, 2020, continue to June 8, 2020, and further continue to June 29, 2020, and further continue to July 27, 2020, be further continued um, to August 8 at 9 a.m. 2020. Great. I have a motion by Mr. Studo. I have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, could we just add uh, clarifying the location would be at the middle high school property? 
And so amending the motion to include the location. And I heard Mr. Studo say that. <laughs> amending the motion to include at middle school location. Middle school, high school. Middle school slash high school location. I'm actually wondering because there is sort of a funny arrangement with the ownership of that property. Um, the football field itself is actually within, but not part of the middle high school property. So we just want to out of the enterprise for Hillview, right? Yeah, we, we just want to say 189, 189 Park Street, which I believe is the address of the middle high school. That would oh. be so. okay at 189 Park Street. Okay. Thank you. So I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary, and any further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary is an aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. And Minya Pelli is aye. Okay, and thanks, Mr. Murphy. And clerk stats, Madam Clerk, can you, I, I forgot this in our board member reports, but while you're on the on the call with us. You also had a number of um, volunteers that showed up. Um, Mr. Gilberto reminded me because Maureen Stevens was there as one of the volunteers. Could you tell us the names of all those volunteers that helped us with that annual town meeting? You had quite a number of individuals that came and helped us out with that. Um, I'll, I'll rely on Mr. Gilberto too for his memory, but um, Mr. Collins, our HR director, Sharon Kelleher, our, our librarian, as you mentioned, Maureen Stevens, the Parks and Recreations Operations Director, Jennifer Ford, the Youth Services Director. Um, Mark Hamill, the Building Superintendent. Yes, Mark Hamill, the Building Superintendent. And you had so your, uh, and, uh, you also had your regular you had some of your regular workers that were in absolutely my my assistant town clerk Janet Murphy was there, and our dedicated election staff Pat Fillmore. Um, we had uh, Carol Clary. We had Jean Fitzgerald, Nancy Brown, and Camille Welch, and Rose Vitale. Yes, I just wanted to make sure we acknowledge them. Thank you. Thank you. They deserve acknowledgement. That appreciate that they all showed up for that um, and helped to make that a success for us as well. Ms. Mr. O'Leary? Did you? Wait for someone else, goodbye. Oh, <laughs> all, right. Thank okay. you. all right, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Murphy too, for joining us. And I think we- Thank you. Have a good thank night, you. everyone. You too. You too. So our, our next order of business is a vote on the recommendations on the special town <coughs> meeting warrant articles. And I think we're, we're gonna pass over this, Mr. Gilberto. So we, we, we can- the board's pleasure, yep. We'll move on to a review of the liaison assignments. Um, and uh, Mr. Gilberto, let's do a quick rundown of it. Uh, Mr. Gilberto sent us in our packet today and um, I updated some of the names and um, I, I think a couple of them are kind of non-active, but I think it's important to have the members remain as a liaison in case they do become active. So we've left some of those to, to be, to, so some of those uh, are still on here. So Mr. O'Leary will have the Board of Health. Mr. O'Leary will have the Board of Registrars. Um, Mr. Walner, Mr. O'Leary will have the uh, Cable TV Advisory Committee. Mr. Walner will serve as the Liaison for Commission on Disabilities. Mrs. Gonzalez will be the CIT Liaison. Mr. Studo will be the Community Planning Commission liaison. Mr. O'Leary for the Conservation Commission. Mrs. Gonzalez for the Constables. Mr. Walner, Council on Aging. Mr. Studo will be the voting member on the Economic Development Committee and Mrs. Gonzalez will be the associate member. Mr. Studo on Energy Conservation Committee. Um, Manu Pelli is Finance Committee. Mr. Walner, um, Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority. Ms. Mrs. Gonzalez and I will be um, on the, the liaisons to the financial planning team. 
Mr. O'Leary on the Hillview Commission. Mr. Walner on Historic District Commission and Historical Commission. Mr. O'Leary liaison to the Housing Partnership. Mr. Studo for Information Technology Advisory Committee. Um, I'll be with the Infrastructure Committee. Mr. Studo on the Ipswich River Watershed Advisory Board, uh, the liaison to that. Mrs. Gonzalez for the Veterans Events Committee and for the 4th of July Committee. Mr. Studo for the Land Utilization Committee, uh, Local Emergency Planning Committee, Library Trustees and MAP C representative, I'll be continuing in those assignments. Martin's Pond Reclamation Study Committees, Mr. Walner, MBTA representative, Mr. Walner, Mobile Home Rent Control Board, Mr. O'Leary, the Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce representative, Mr. Studo, North Reading Cultural Council, North Reading Forest Committee, Mr. Walner, North Reading Housing Authorities, Mrs. Gonzalez, um, Northeast Metropolitan Regional Vocation School Committee rep is Mr. O'Leary, Recycling Committee, Mrs. Gonzalez, RMLD Advisory Board Member, Mr. Studo, School Committee is me, Mr. O'Leary for Secondary School Building Committee, Mrs. Gonzalez and I will be the contacts for the state representative, the state senator, town administrator, Mr. Walner, uh, continuing his duties with the taxation aid committee, uh, town council, town moderator, town treasurer. Again, I'll be continuing in that. And capital improvement planning committee will be Mrs. Gonzalez and I. Mrs. Gonzalez and me, Veterans Memorial Committee, Mrs. Gonzalez, and Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Studel will be working on the Water Wastewater Planning Advisory Committee and the Water Commission. Zoning Board of Appeals will be Mr. Studel, and Youth Services Committee will be Mrs. Gonzalez continuing in that. And that is in your packet, and I think we'll have to update the website with those. I think I saw some of the some of the well, our board was changed, but you also post this online, right, Mr. Gilberto? <clears throat> I believe it's posted on the website. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, great. All right, are we all set? I guess just. Oh, Mr. Mr. Walner. Yeah, I, I think it's just probably a typo, but on the cable TV advisory committee, I don't think you need both Steve and I on it. It's, uh, it, you know, you were both on it and I, 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 I can, I, I can take one it. of you off and swap you out with a different committee. I think they were both of you are on it as we were negotiating the um, oh, okay. contract. And I just, I didn't take you off of it, but I'm, I'm happy. To <laughs> I'll be happy to have him handle the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. O'Leary, if you wanted to, I can swap you out with something else. I was trying to keep it even, Mr. Walner. So uh, just, just but, to, you know, just having paid attention to that committee. Yeah. I've been highly active. So uh, I mean, some of the assignments are going to be pretty, pretty active. And so, and you know, for example, Mr. O'Leary is probably going to be pretty active with Board of Health as we're in COVID-19 era. And also Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Studer are going to be pretty active with the wastewater, wastewater stuff. So. Right. And then I just have one other request. Um, is the uh, Community Planning Commission, I have gone to practically every meeting in the last four or five years, and I'd like to at least be considered to be an alternate for that group. Um, just, yeah, know. well, I, they're not they're not voting members, and I I um I have Mr. Mr. Studo handling that. I don't think it precludes you from going to the meetings at all. Um, and Mr. Studo will be serving as the liaison to that. So, um, you you could still continue and continue to go to those meetings. Okay. Um, okay. So our next order of business is uh, legal, legal bills, bill. which we're also passing over, right, Mr. Gilberto? 
There are a couple of motions that oh. will require action, um, but the ones related to Attorney Detula do not require action. Okay. All right. So we do have a so we do have some motions then, yeah. Mr. Skudo. It requires a vote. Yes. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for May 2020 in the amount of sixteen thousand four hundred seventy dollars and forty seven cents as follows: General ten thousand seven hundred sixty six forty seven. Labor four thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars and fifty cents. Twenty Elm Street six hundred four dollars and fifty cents. American Arbitration four hundred dollars, and SSBC three hundred seventy dollars and fifty cents for a total of sixteen thousand eight hundred forty dollars and seventy cents. Uh, I have a question before we go. Uh, the two numbers are different. Is there one? Is there a reason for that, Mr. Gobardo? Why 167047 as follows, but then the total 168470? It does look like my unmute. Okay. I'm not on mute. Okay. It does look like there's a typographical error on that. Um, it will take me a moment to correct it or to figure out which number is right, unless Mr. O'Leary has his calculator here. The uh, like that a quick perusal doesn't even look like either one of them are right, but no, the total, uh, the total at the bottom, Mr. O'Leary is correct. The total at the bottom is off by 27 cents. The total 16,840 97. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I see it. Mr. O'Leary, that's because you got numbers going through your mind with the 7,000 tax returns that still have to be done. I'm sitting so. at my desk and I have a pile in front of me here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Madam Chair, I'm just going through the bill directly. Uh, bear with me one moment. Take the lower number. Pay the lower okay. number. Uh, the number is $16,047. It no, no, it ends in 97. If you take, you know, 50 times 4 is 200, less 3 cents is 97. So it should end in 97. I just added them up. And I, yeah, again, I can do it one believe, more time. I believe the issue may be the subtotal. One of the subtotal numbers is wrong. When I'm reading off of the Copeman and Page bill, um, it looks like the number should be 16. Bear with me. $16,070.47. 160747. Do you should we correct one of the subtotal ones on this? If we can vote the the yeah, if, if I can it just may take me time to add add up from the bills to get the right number and I don't want to That's fine. You Whatever you guys want to do. I'm just I'm just reading off this. If we get approved the 60450, just make that uh, 604. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Madam Chair, I'm going to ask if we could approve it as a lump sum in the total of $16,070.47. Okay. Mr. Strudo, your motion okay. won't be, yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for a lump sum of for May 2020 for sixteen thousand seventy dollars and forty seven cents. Seventy or four seventy, Michael. From the bills themselves, or from the subtotal. Subtotal. What are they looking for? The in the total. So I'm I'm reading from page twenty nine of the packet with the detail of the bill. Mm -hmm which is showing us a, a total of $16,070 and 47 cents. So it seems like maybe that American arbitration, it's a $400 difference. Michael, do we normally appropriate the, the arbitration as a separate motion or is that that's through Copeland page, correct? No, we, we pay that directly, so that that, I, that may be the issue. Yeah, uh, that's for, that's seventy five three seventy five. It's two bills for seventy five and one for three seventy five in the pack. That, that is the issue. Yes. So okay. It, that should be voted. 
We'll vote. I would ask the board could vote that separately. I don't know why it got totaled in that fashion. It should not have been. Excuse me. Three twenty-five is the statement June tenth, and then seventy-five is the statement May twenty-fifth. So that that's the four hundred difference, right? Correct. Okay. So this is just for the motion is just for the payment of the legal bills to Copeland and Page for sixteen thousand seventy dollars and forty-seven cents. Right, yeah. so that so we'll separately move to pay the American arbitration statements. <clears throat> right, so we have. I have. Do I have? You did make that motion, Mr. Studer. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion, Mr. O'Leary? Mr. O'Leary's aye. Mr. Uh, Walner. Aye. Mr. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. And the second motion related to those arbitration invoices, which totaled $400. So, Madam Chair, I move to approve bills for May 2020 of $400 to American Arbitration. May 25th. And um, the bills of May 25th as well as um, June 10th, June 10th, 75 and 325 to American Arbitration Association. I have a motion by Mr. Studo. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion. Mr. O'Leary, you're on mute, by the way. I have a motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Aye. Emmanuel Pelli is aye. And, and that's it for those those particular motions. A nice catch there, Mr. Studo. Yes. I hope I hope Mr. Studo's little thing here is not a public record or I mean <laughs> I got this, a few of those, trust me. I mean <laughs> This looks like like the notes I take. I mean, this is yeah. <laughs> I know. It's got all the relevant numbers, so yeah, I got. That. Doesn't matter. Let's not reveal all of your secrets at once here. All right. So our next uh, order of business is is the town administrator's report, Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do have two matters to report to the board this evening. The first is um, related to the police department. Uh, police Lieutenant Kevin Brennan retired effective July second. Lieutenant Brennan has been a valued member of the North Reading Police Department for over 27 years. Um, his, his experience and his expertise will be difficult to replace. And although Lieutenant <clears throat> Brennan has decided to pursue other dreams on a full-time basis, he's asked to be considered for appointment as a per diem reserve police officer. The purpose of the North Reading Police Reserve Program is to provide additional cadre of trained police personnel who employ police powers to further the efforts of the North Reading Police Department during routine and emergency operations. Um, it is my intention to appoint Lieutenant Brennan as a reserve police officer this week. And as a result of his retirement, um, which uh, we had, the department had been planning for, um, and I know um, Mr. O'Leary and Mrs. Uh, Minipelli, you're aware of his intentions as well, going back to our um, discussions with that particular unit in the uh, fall of last year, uh, but as a result of his retirement, Sergeant Joseph Thibodeau will be promoted to the rank of uh, Lieutenant and Detective Thomas Hatch will be promoted to the rank of Sergeant. They are scheduled to be sworn in um, at uh, um, a small ceremony at the police department this coming Wednesday morning. Second, uh, I wish to just highlight, and I know there was just some discussion at the last meeting by the organizer and some discussion at the beginning of this meeting, but there is an event that will be taking place this Wednesday evening. Um, it will uh, begin at Ipswich River Park in the parking lots and uh, will then proceed um, by, uh, by foot, as we understand it, from Ipswich River Park to the Common. Uh, it's a, described as an open invitation, peaceful protest with speakers, music, and marching from IRP to the Common. Uh, PPE and social distancing will be required, They're encouraging civic, civic engagement with voter forms and voter registration forms and volunteer leaders. A uh, group identified itself as North Reading Youth for Anti-Racism. Uh, they had originally been looking to host the event um, in uh, the end of June, uh, and then a, a final date was identified 
um, for this uh, coming Wednesday. They've advertised for attendees to arrive um, uh, no earlier than 5.30. Um, they're planning to have the speech at Ipswich River Park and then march from IRP to the Common, um, I believe, uh, with the formal program beginning around 6 o'clock p.m. And that concludes my comments under my report, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Any questions? Seeing none, we will move on. Old and new business. Mr. O'Leary, why don't you start us off? We'll start us off by again congratulating Lieutenant Brennan. Uh, and I've known Kevin uh, most of his life. He's younger than I am. And he's, uh, <laughs> he's born and raised in North Reading and, uh, and been an integral part of the police department as town administrator said for 27 years and been an officer, uh, sergeant, and lieutenant for a good significant portion of that time here. And, you know, Kevin's contributions. Uh, you know, you may not have seen them all, but they're 24 seven and uh, contributions were substantial and uh, I wish him well. I just hope his wife is prepared, you know, for having him home and uh, wish him a long and healthy and happy retirement. Uh, congratulations to Kevin, terrific fellow. And I'd also like to mention, you know, the retirement of, um, of Wayne Hardacre from the school department, who uh, many of you may have known him as the superintendent of all the buildings for the school department and i'll tell you right now the integral part that he played in uh, first of all maintaining the old school but building the new school and uh, maintaining the new school and learning the uh, intricacies of all the uh, everything that goes into operating that school which is uh, unbelievable everything from the package treatment plant to the uh, the, uh, the heating and air, air conditioning system there is just unbelievable what had to be undertaken and uh, wayne did a fantastic job uh, I would say always with a smile, but uh, there was an awful lot of frustration over the years. Again, he participated in the secondary school building committee from the beginning uh, and still remains an active member of it. And again, his contributions uh, to the school department, the school system, and the children of our school system is uh, an extraordinary and uh, well deserved retirement for, for Wayne and wish him well too. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Mrs. Gonzalez? I would also like to congratulate. Lieutenant Brennan and thank him for his years of service to the town and to the people of North Reading. Um, I believe his son graduated with my daughter, if I remember correctly. So I, I do wish him well and thank him very much. Thank you. Mr. Waller? I have nothing, thank you. Mr. Studo? I'm good. I'll just say again, two congratulations to both. Mr. Harding and Lieutenant Brennan and wish, wish them the best and thank them both for their service to the town. And I think that concludes our evening. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Madam Chair, motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to adjourn <laughs> by Mr. Studo and a second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Manu Pelli is aye. All right. Thank you, folks. Have a good night. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Bye.